Well, brethren, for today's message, I, I'm going to mention my, you know, two scriptures or two verses of the Bible. One of them, of course, is my favorite, as many of you know. Uh, we just sang a hymn about it. And the other one is a verse that I've been stressing over and over and over and over again uh, for the past year. So my purpose today is really to put, this, put these two scriptures together, which really identify the church, and it identifies the church, and also it is what's required for it to continue as it is. I've titled this, Gathering Together in Love. Gathering together in love. Now, most of you have all heard my story before. And I studied the Word for about two years once God was calling me. And I finally uh, started attending on the first day of Unleavened Bread in 1986. And I came there and I was just meeting a whole lot of people. At that time, the, uh, the, the congregation was, you know, 400 plus people and I was meeting and greeting so many people, it was hard to remember everybody's name, but there was the two questions always was asked, like, what is your name and how did you find out about the church? And after two services back to back of hearing that and then the following Sabbath the same question uh, I know that they were asking me you know they wanted to know who I was and they really wanted to know how I was called into the church but after a while it kind of felt like they were saying well who are you and how did you find out about us and and it just seemed like it was, you know, it was, it was difficult for me. I was uh, 25 at the time when I started attending. And, but, it, but then I got to meet a few people, and some people wanted to know a little bit more about me and become friends. So it took a little bit of a, a, a time, and I really enjoyed the friends that I had back then. I still have a few that I get together with, but... I met a wonderful lady there, and a few months after attending, and married her two years later, so we've been together now for 33 years, and it's been really great, but it's been a really rough ride with the church. Uh, the first thing that was happening between 90 and 91, there was a, a splinter group that went off to church, and it took some people, and uh, it took a real dear friend of mine who was trying to get me and my wife to go with them and it was really it was really difficult it was really hard uh, to deal with that experience and I knew that I had to stay founded in the church uh, and not move and then the apostasy of 1995 happened and everything changed and I didn't know what to do where to go I was not spiritually mature enough to understand what was going on. And because of the previous um, situation we had in the, in the church with the splinter group, I felt that I couldn't move. I had to stay where I was at. And again, I was spiritually imma you know, immature at that time. And, and I just had to you know, ride it along. But I wrote it along long enough and realized that I was in a church that I didn't know. It was an unknown church to me, so of course we stopped attending. But one of the burning questions in my mind constantly was about the Sabbath. It was about the Sabbath. I had a good friend that always got together when we come back home here and we always ended up talking about the Sabbath. The Sabbath was very important to me. And he invited me a few times to come to his group. And, you know, and in 2010, I decided I was going to take him up on his offer. And he said, well, you know, we just had a, a problem in our group and things are chaotic. And uh, so I, I held off another couple years. And 
you all know my story. I ended up out in St. Louis. I was uh, stationed out there with the Army at the time because I went back in the Army because the other church had changed said it was okay to be in military service. But I was on my last two years of service out there. And so I did a research, you know, and this was 2012 that I did a huge research about the Sabbath and finally started it attending there in St. Louis, and I, I showed up there at the St. Louis congregation, the United Church of God, and was sitting there meeting everybody, talking to some people, and it, and it was like, it, it was different. It wasn't like, you know, what's your name, and how did you find out about us? It was more in-depth. They wanted to know a little bit more about me. We got into conversations. This is the first day. So I was sitting there, I was talking to some a group of people, and I don't know, we probably led into something talking about music, I'm sure, um, because I had this, you know, this lady there was sitting there, she was listening to me uh, intentively, and then all of a sudden she just darted off to the far corner of the congregation to go talk to her husband. And, and uh, Sherry, she drags her husband over. So I, I met Ralph. And he, we started talking, and, and like, and it's just like instantly we just found that we had so much in common. And the next service, again, we got together and we was talking, and we just had so much in common. It was like I never developed a friendship that fast where we just, you know, everything was just jiving with us and. We could sit there and talk forever and never run out of anything to talk about. And it's still that way today, in fact. But it was really, uh, it was really interesting. And I got to know a lot of the people in the church. They were a really friendly church. And each week I tried to meet somebody new. And there was one time I was sitting there, I was talking to a few people. And there's one lady who was talking to her friends. And she was very concerned. Um, she was talking about her daughter-in-law. Um, it was going to be her first grandchild. Her daughter-in-law was pregnant, and she was dealing with placenta previa. And she really didn't know what that was, and she was really concerned, asking everybody to, uh, to pray about that. And so I overheard that conversation, so I went over to her and introduced myself. Her name was Dolores, and I started talking to her about that. And I tried to give her some comfort because my wife went through that uh, during her second pregnancy with her daughter, Rebecca. And I tried to comfort her and say that it's, it's a temporary thing. A lot of times it will fix itself. And, 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 it, and it gave her a little bit more comfort because she was really never really heard of too much about it. Uh, I made a friend that day, and all of her girlfriends that were hanging out there, it, it was just another opportunity to meet more people. <clears throat> You can always find something to break the ice with somebody, to get to know somebody a little bit more. But it was just, it was just a fascinating journey. Uh, coming back into the church, it was just, there was just so much love in, in this church. Uh, they, they accepted me right away. Uh, there was concern for one another in the church. There was encouragement that people were given to each other in the church. Uh, strong friendships have developed, and I can't get rid of Ralph. He keeps on coming to visit me, but uh, he, he's just, he's just a, a good friend, and I, I go out to see him every once in a while. It's really enjoyable. And like I said, we never run out of things to talk about. So it was really, it was really difficult when I had to leave there uh, to, to come back home. But one of the things that I address them is the, the one lesson that I learned and is now my favorite scripture. If you want to turn to John chapter 13, John chapter 13, and we'll start in verse 34, although 35 is my favorite, but it's kind of together here, and we just sang about it. John chapter 13, verse 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, 
all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is what I told them before I left to come home. It was difficult to leave there, but I came home here and I experienced the same love in this small little congregation. I went to the Feast of Tabernacles and everybody there was friendly. There was no bickering. Everything was, everybody was concerned about each other. There was love in the church and other congregations that I went to. That's all I find is, is, is I find love, uh, love for one another. So to me, I found the church that you know, Jesus was talking about. I found his people, his disciples. <clears throat> I want to read that same two scriptures from the Passion uh, Bible translation. So I give to you now a new commandment. Love each other just as much as I have loved you. For when you demonstrate the same love I have for you by loving one another, everyone will know that you are my true followers. Christ had a great love for his disciples and for us. He demonstrated it throughout his lifetime as a human being. <clears throat> Especially when he took upon himself the sins of all mankind. Brethren, there's no greater love than that. God loves us. Jesus loves us. So we should love one another, just as they have demonstrated. This love for one another identifies us as the, the disciples of Jesus the Christ. And therefore, it also identifies us as the church of God. I like this translation that I just read because it highlights his true followers. There are many that claim to be followers of Christ, but do they have love for one another? And not just at church, but all the time, every day. Every day. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you don't have to turn there, I'm just going to talk about this uh, love chapter, but it shows us how deep that love should be and how important it is. See, when I was looking for a Sabbath-keeping church, I found a few, and I knew of others which had split off from that church of old which held true to the doctrines of God. Some had prophecy and knowledge of God's truth. They had understanding of all mysteries of the Bible. But they did not demonstrate the same love Jesus spoke of. They spoke harshly of others who faithfully kept the commandments of God, but were not members of their particular organization. They even mistreated their own members, not showing mercy, when the scriptures tell us that love suffers long, and love is kind. They puffed themselves up, saying that they are the one true church, you know, parading around, saying they're the only ones. Everybody else is wrong. While teaching their members to despise others, including their own family members. They speak evil of others. That's not what... That's not what 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us about love. This is not love if they do not if they do not have love. Remember, they have no love. They have nothing. Nothing at all. 
knowing the truth, understanding the Bible, and having the gift of prophecy means nothing if you're not living the truth, following God's way of life, and loving the brethren. We are to abide in faith, in hope, and in love, knowing that love is the greatest. However, we need to get together as a congregation of God's church to truly exercise this love for one another. Yes, we can have love towards the brethren and pray for their needs, but gathering together in love and encouraging each other is very, very important. Which brings me to my next scripture that I've been mentioning over and over again, and that's Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 24. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. The brethren were not gathering together in love. We should not be forsaking the assembly. Why? Why? I want to read the, those same two verses with the, from the God's Word translation. <clears throat> We must also consider how to encourage each other to show love and to do good things. We should not stop gathering together with other believers, as some of you are doing. Instead, we must continue to encourage each other even more as we see the day of the Lord coming. We encourage one another. We do that all the time here. We all have needs. We talk to each other about our trials. And we seek encouragement and sound advice from each other. So that we're going to go about doing the right thing. Obeying God and, and showing love to others. That's what we're supposed to do. <clears throat> we are to gather together in love with those who have been called by God and share a like mind. Those who have been called by God. We have been called by God. And we're supposed to share a like mind. The mind that was in Christ Jesus. This is the mind that we're supposed to share. Brethren, I want to end this message on a positive note. So please close your Bibles. I don't want you to read what follows in verses 26 and 31. Because these verses explain what may happen when you go against God and when you commit sin that is unrepentant. You can read this whole chapter later to understand the whole context of which it is written. And you'll see once you read that whole chapter how important it is to assemble together in love. We are together, together in love. We have really close friendships here in Bonds. My friend Dave, he's another one that we built a friendships very quickly. We had so much in common. Then he left me like all the others. <laughs> but we get together. We go see them. They, they come and see us. These are bonds that are going to last forever. We're all good friends. We are concerned about each other. 
We love each other, and this is what we're supposed to be doing. This is what God wants us to do. This is what Jesus says, identifies us as his disciples. Again, there's other groups out there that keep the Sabbath, keep the commandments, do good works, help people, speak about prophecy, keep the holy days. And I'm sure there's, they have, some of them have love too. But I've seen some that seem like they are missing the love, that are making more, other things more important than love. And again, love, if you don't have it, you ain't got nothing. That's right, I said, you ain't got nothing if you, got, if you ain't got love. So I encourage you all to gather together in love and lift each other up, grow stronger in your relationships. I feel very, very blessed to have all of you as friends and brethren. I want us, I want us to all get along. We're getting closer to the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to spend eternity with each other, whether you like it or not. So now is the time to gather together in love.